Good morning, everyone. My name is Vicky, and today we will be talking about the infamous Milgram experiment. And for my AP Psychology students, this experiment corresponds to topic 9.3, which is conformity, compliance, and obedience. So imagine, the year is 1961, 16 years after the end of the Holocaust. The world is in disbelief of the terrible events that occurred in Europe during World War II, and Stanley Milgram was no exception. Milgram, a psychologist at Yale University, was interested in studying obedience to authority figures, as, during the Holocaust, many Nazi soldiers would obey the commands of their commanders, even if it would conflict with their moral conscience. Now, undoubtedly, the commanders that gave the instructions to kill millions of innocent lives were guilty. However, the question arises as to whether the Nazi soldiers were also guilty. On one hand, these soldiers were the actual ones that carried out the execution and tortured millions. On the other hand, these soldiers were also simply abiding by the commands of the higher-ups, and if they were to disobey such commands, it would most likely result in their own death. So it's quite a tricky question as to whether or not these soldiers should be punished. Now, this was exactly what Milgram wanted to find out. His infamous experiment was specifically designed to determine how much we will resist an immoral command coming from an authority figure, and the degree of obedience one exhibits to said authority figure. Now with the background out of the way, let's jump into the actual experiment itself. So Milgram first started by printing an ad in the newspaper that stated how Yale University was conducting a social experiment and that they needed participants. Now imagine, you saw this ad and decided to pay a visit to Yale. As you walk inside, you were met with an individual in a white lab coat, along with another individual who looks to be like another participant. Now, the individual in the white lab coat, whom we will call the experimenter, explains to you and the other participant that the study is supposedly about the effects of punishment on learning and memorization. Then, the experimenter moves on to describe the process of the experiment. First, you and the other participants will draw lots to decide who is the teacher and who is the student. Now, little do you know, both slips of paper say teacher, and the other participant is actually in on it with the experimenter, and by default, the other participant will be the student, leaving you as the teacher. Next, the teacher and the student are separated into two different rooms that have a thin wall between them. That way, they can still communicate and hear each other. So the setup is that the experimenter and the teacher are in one room, in which there is a device in front of the teacher that could deliver an electric shock to the learner in the other room, as punishment. Furthermore, the teacher is given a list of word pairs to teach to the learner. The teacher begins first by reading the list to the learner. Then they will read the first word of each pair along with four possible answers. In response, the learner will press a button as their answer. If the answer is incorrect, the teacher is to deliver a shock to the learner, starting from 15 volts and increasing by an additional 15 volts for each wrong answer. If the answer is correct, the teacher will simply move on to the next word pair. One thing to keep in mind is that the shock device in front of the teacher has labels that range from slight shock to danger, severe shock. Now, as the learner purposely answers incorrectly, the teacher begins to deliver shock and gradually delivers higher amounts of voltage. This is accompanied by sounds of complaint from the learner, first beginning with perhaps a grunt, Ow. then a yell, a scream, banging against the wall, and eventually, when the teacher reaches the maximum voltage, the learner refuses to respond and falls silent. Now, the poor teacher believes that they are delivering an actual electric shock because they will hear the sounds of agony from the learner. However, the reality was that the learner received no shock whatsoever. Instead, they have pre-recorded audio tapes for each specific shock level. As the shock level progresses, the learner will play audio recordings of their voices that contain their audible protests as previously described. Now, you might be thinking that this whole experiment just sounds like a harsh prank to the teacher, but here's where it gets interesting. If at any time, 
the teacher were to protest or show signs of wanting to stop the experiment, the experimenter would give specific word prods. And in this order, the prods were 1. Please continue or please go on. 2. The experiment requires that you continue. 3. It is absolutely essential that you continue. 4. You have no other choice. You must go on. The prods were in this specific order, so that if prod 1 didn't work, the experimenter could then use prod 2. However, if the subject were to continue showing signs of protest after prod 4, the experiment would then be stopped. Otherwise, the experiment would only be stopped when the maximum of 450 volts was pressed three consecutive times. Now, let's discuss the results. Out of the 40 teachers, two-thirds of them have pressed the maximum voltage. Additionally, the scary part of this study is that oftentimes, the teacher will first hear a sound of pain from the learner, which they will then question the experimenter and ask if the learner is okay. The experimenter would then respond, beginning with prod 1. Then, hesitantly, the teacher would go back to the experiment and begin questioning their learner again. And when the teacher hears another sound of discomfort from the learner, they will ask the experimenter again if they should continue with the experiment. The experimenter would then respond with prod 2, and here's where it gets scary. Most participants, after stopping the experiment to question the experimenter roughly two or three times, will then stop questioning altogether and proceed to deliver shock all the way to the maximum voltage. This result gives us a dark glimpse into the human mind and describes to us how we as humans are willing to inflict pain onto strangers that have done us no harm, all because of an authority figure. So by this point, you can see the resemblance of Milgram's study to the situation of the Nazi soldiers and their commanders. The teacher, which put upon the role of the Nazi soldiers, exhibited a high obedience and conformity to the authority figure, or the experimenter, which depicts the Nazi commanders. And they had expressed a degree of obedience so high that they were willing to inflict pain on innocent individuals like the learner, which portrayed the Jews. So the main takeaway of this experiment was that authority figures can bypass our own morality and that we often exhibit high levels of obedience towards those of high standings of authority. Now just a few extra notes for my AP Psych students. The main takeaway for you is that this experiment is considered unethical because the teacher had actually believed that the learner was hurt. Additionally, you should also know that the level of obedience rises when the authority figure is close at hand such as being in the same room. Next, obedience was higher when the learner was further away, such as being in a different room from the teacher, and when the authority figure was associated with a prestigious institution like Yale University compared to John Doe from a random institution. Overall, I don't remember seeing a lot of questions about the Milgram experiment on the AP exam, but it's so important to have a general idea of this experiment. So that's it, and I hope you guys learned something new, and please look forward to our next podcast about the famous Bobadol experiment and its application on the social learning in children. Thank you, and have a lovely day.